Hey guys, what's going on? It's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. Today we're in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and behind me is PAR Racing Engines, and owner Scott Duggins was kind enough to give us a little bit of time to check out the shop, get a little walk through, and see what they got going on. They do a lot of really cool stuff, so let's go check it out. When you purchase SBI valve train components, that blue and yellow box represents 40 years of industry knowledge, R&D, quality that exceeds OEM standards, and outstanding customer service, as well as a dedicated team, ready to help no matter your application needs. That's how SBI keeps engines humming. All right, guys, well, we're now inside here at PAR Racing Engines, joined by Scott Duggins. And uh, Scott, Really appreciate you giving us a little bit of time to check the shop out. You know, obviously you've heard the name uh, PAR Racing Engines out there for a long time, and you guys do some great work. So I'm pretty pumped to to be inside and see how it all gets done. Well, this yeah. is our main shop right here, where we yeah. get most of the stuff done right here. Yeah. So, so if you would maybe before we start walking through, just give us a quick little history of the shop. You know, when you guys started and. You know, how many folks you got working for you now? Yeah, I actually started building engines uh, in 84 okay. with my father. Yeah. And really wanted to do the racing stuff. And he wanted to do the stock stuff. Yeah. So we actually did both out of this building right here for a long time until he retired. Yeah. So uh, whenever he retired, uh, I actually, 93, kicked off basically racing. Yeah. Okay. So, Very good. So... So real well for us. Yeah, you've been at it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And then, you know, how many how many employees do you have helping you uh, out? Nine. Days? We okay. have nine here. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. And I understand you do somewhere around 250 engines yeah. a year between, you know, new builds and getting stuff uh, back for rebuilds. Yep. 250 to probably as much as, we've done as much as 300. So yeah. that's awesome. Somewhere right around in there is what we try to do. Yeah. No, that's pretty good business. Yeah, so. we have three full-time assembled yeah. guys, so we, we you got to keep them busy. Yeah, you're cranking it out. That's right. All right. Well, Scott, uh, I'll let you kind of show us around here, and I'll follow you. So let us know uh, where you want to go. Well, um, probably the first, I would like to show you some things that I'm proud of myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that we do here in house that that I do basically all the welding. Yeah. Um, and our ability to repair, you know, a lot of times we replace, but our ability to repair. What a what a what a, a guy's got whenever he comes in with with trauma yep. is one thing I'm proud of. Yeah. Um, for instance, like we took this head right here, yeah, which this chamber he gets a shot of it was just like this one right here. Wow. We had to weld the whole thing up. The whole chamber was gone. Right. And then now you can see when we're almost finished with it, barring a little bit of blend work. Yeah. You know we'll pick, put this back to look just like that. Yeah. Um, that's so, incredible. You know, yeah. I, I do my own manifolds here uh, as far as sheet metal stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as cast manifolds, we port them out on a fit hood is what I'm going to show you next. Yeah, okay. Engine Quest, your home for new OE type replacement and performance engine parts and cores. For our full line of products, visit enginequest.com or call 1-800-426-8771. Engine Quest, the name you trust for engine parts, cores, and recycling. Uh, here's a centroid. We buy our our, um, our manifolds um, blanks, or most of them, I would say, okay. blanks. Yeah. Uh, they'll start out like a raw, yeah. a raw cast. Right. And we'll take this manifold, and this is one of I'm hand ported, and Josh has digitized and made a program on it to now CNC it. Yeah. So it, it cuts down the time a bunch, and like I say, whenever you're producing as many as we're producing. It's, it's a big benefit to be able oh, sure. to put them things on this machine and, sure. and, and, and get them out exactly and qualify them exactly the way that, that we want them done. Yep. Now, Scott, how long does it take to go from something that you get kind of raw to a finished product that you're going to put on a build? Um, we'll probably have six hours, seven hours in that manifold. Okay. Which is not terrible. Yeah. You know, before, uh, a lot of times on the hand port jobs and stuff, I would have 
uh, 15. Yeah. You know? Yes, it's, so, but it's cut in half. But we'll do those things in several different ways. We'll have five or six hours on like a match port deal, mm -hmm. and we can still have up to 15 hours on the, on the full port. Right. Okay. And another That's thing I want to show you is, is Jody's machine here, uh, yeah. RMC. Yeah. Um, he is actually uh, probing this block now. Uh, and like whenever I was talking about the stop and stuff and, and working with my dad, you know, we had all manual machines. Yeah. And we would take and line up off a cylinder that the guy's already got uh, in the block where they're uh, whatever manufacturer it may be. This thing here probes it. And yeah. we know exactly where the cylinders are now, where they need to be, yeah. where they're supposed to be. Lifter bores, where they're supposed to be. Uh, we did a block last week, had the lifter bores out on both banks and and, 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 and cocked also. So yeah. it was off about six thou one way and 10 thou the other way. Yeah. And we was able to find that in this machine and go in there and correct it. Yeah. So the end user gets a block that's the way it's supposed to be, not just the way that somebody casted it or the manufacturer. Right, cast. right, uh, that's pretty awesome. And uh, what other types of work does this do? Obviously the probing aspect helps you guys a lot, but uh, obviously this has a lot of capabilities. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 uh, we'll finish machine it to whatever spec that we want to do as yeah. far as boring, decking, uh, O-ring, or maybe cutting it for those top fuel hoops, okay. or uh, lifter bores, clearance in. We actually do cam tunnels on this machine also. Okay, yeah. So pretty much about all- Pretty versatile. Yeah, yeah. machine in this, we do it. That RMC is, is been great, as yeah. well as the Central has been great yeah. for um, our head ports, because this same machine, we'll take our our heads that we get from uh, Brodax, yeah. and uh, I can show you over here. We'll take we'll take our raw casting heads, yeah. which you know we always buy in bulk, usually a pilot or so at a time, yeah. and machine those things to be our finished product head. Yeah. And uh, the best thing about that, and this machine over here, is before, whenever I would come up with something and say I was working with Brodax on a cylinder head, we would have from me grinding it, testing it, to end user getting it would be six to eight months a lot of mm. times. I can do this thing in a week now. Yeah. Yeah. I can grind it, he can digitize it, we can cut it, we can test it, it'll be at the racetrack in a week. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it, it, it progresses our business dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's great. So we like to buy our manifolds a hundred at a time and our cylinder heads by bulk and yeah. we'll cut them things up and whack them up and do, you know, yeah, all different kind of stuff with them yeah. for, for different applications. That's great. And another thing that we we ended up was forced to buy. Um, I say forced to buy with a lot of a lot of things that's been going on uh, in right. this in this post COVID world that we live in is um, the supply. So we would have cylinder heads ready, didn't have, didn't have locks or lash caps or retainers or cups or whatever. Yeah. And um, we'd be waiting as much as five months on that stuff. Wow. Yeah. So it made us buy this Haas that we're real proud of, and it's doing okay. a, it's a five yeah. axis Haas, and uh, we actually uh, do or. Do our retainers. Yeah. Do a lot of little stuff. We make our top fuel hoops for our blown stuff. Uh-huh. Um, all kind of little things that something that you used to buy from somebody else that you wanted to put your twist on and they didn't want to do it, so we yeah. put our own twist on. Yeah, yeah. So uh you know, and that's that that's helped us do those two fifty to three hundred engines a year. Because yeah. now I don't wait on retainers. Yeah. And how long have you had the high? Uh we've had it uh about a year now. Okay. Very cool. So, yeah. No, it's nice having machines that give you those capabilities and uh, allow you to, you know, do that type of stuff. That's yes, awesome. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very good. Yep. All right, this is assembly room. This is where we make all this stuff happen, where we've used all those machines to, to manufacture these parts and we put them all together here. Uh, yeah. There's three of us that work in here full time and we may be working on anything from a 615, 20 degree to a uh, blown small block. Pretty exotic piece. Yeah. Uh, bracket type. Uh, one of our 20 to 21 degree heads on that thing. Though, yeah. Um, that, that that we do here in house. Okay. And our um, a, a blown uh, big block. Right. Pro charge big block. Yeah. Dawson's working on a bracket motor here. Uh, 
getting that thing ready to go. Right. We try to, right. We'll try to turn about uh, seven or so, eight, what all depends on the week. Yeah. How good a week we're going. Yeah. <laughs> out of here. A little ebb and flow to it, but yeah, that's awesome. No, I'm sure with three of you guys, you're able to get through a decent amount of stuff. So. Yep, we do that. And uh, we've got a couple guys that help put them on the dyno, get them off the dyno and yeah. ship them out of here. Yeah, and we didn't showcase it, but obviously you got uh, you know, a cleaning area, a tear down area. And, yeah, and, that's that's yeah. where a lot of the dirty work happens. Yep, yep. You know. Got to do it though, right? Yes, sir. So yeah. I'll, I'll show you that. You All right. see that? Cool. Our tear down inspection room here um, also, you can see our sun hone in the back, and yep. uh, we get try to keep most of our dirt right around in this area right here. Uh, we wash everything with the ultrasonic cleaners and uh, and and uh, stuff that is that. There Pretty much, that's about it. Yeah, this is the dungeon. <laughs> this here is where everything comes in, uh, gets unloaded. We have some uh, storage out here for crankshafts and stuff like that, and uh, this is where they come in before they ever go to the the tear down room mm -hmm. um, and after they're done we will uh, store them back out here also yeah for, for drop off and pick up and yeah and we also store like the our carts is set up with the uh, engines that we've got down that, mm -hmm. that we're trying to get back together also we will usually yeah. have uh during the winter time this past winter we counted up we had about 76 engines down wow in this storage area yeah. <laughs> right here so yeah. it yeah. gets it gets pretty hectic yeah, a lot of carts, but it uh, looks like you guys are able to handle it. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Scott, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to walk us through here and check out PAR racing engines. And uh, again, really cool stuff that you guys have going on with the different CNC capabilities, you know, making some parts, uh, you know, all the stuff you do on the manifolds and heads. And of course, all the finished, you know, big block Chevy engines that you guys produce. So yeah. uh, well, thank you for coming. A lot of cool stuff. Thank you. Guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this shop tour of PAR Racing Engines. If you do have some questions or comments for Scott about the shop, make sure you leave that stuff down in the comment section and we'll make sure to pass it on. And make sure you guys are following PAR across social media as well as following Engine Builder and uh, checking out enginebuildermag.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.